Cellular senescence occurs when cells stop dividing, entering a stagnant phase that prevents damaged cells from proliferating. While this process can protect against cancer, senescent cells that tend to accumulate over time secrete inflammatory factors that have the potential to damage surrounding tissues and even influence other cells into becoming, well, senescent themselves. So in a way, it's kind of like the body's protection against cancer as the body ages, right? Where eventually there comes a cell and that cell becomes sort of abnormal. But then they enter a period of senescence where they can no longer divide, right? They're kind of like dormant in a way. Because it could potentially be that if these cells are to, you know, awaken and be stimulated properly, they could potentially turn into tumors and maybe even become cancer. So it's really not a good thing to have too many senescent cells or whatever process seems to create too many senescent cells could ultimately lead to an environment that is just not safe and highly prone to oxidative stress. And this is where we get things like errors in DNA, which in and of itself leads to cancers, but we'll circle on that later on in the video. Because there's a particular condition that kind of encapsulates the idea of aging, right? We'll talk about that later. As a side note, this is why osteopontin, a secretosome, also known as a secretion byproduct, is something of interest when it comes to possible hair growth stimulation, but also it's something to worry about when it comes to influencing senescent cells and its overall safety as a molecule. So what do we know about osteopontin, if you guys don't remember? Well, osteopontin seems to be excreted as a byproduct from something called hairy nevi, and this is what we commonly refer to as skin moles. It also has other sort of activity when it comes to bone health, but that's not the main concern of this particular video. You see, osteopontin, this secretion from senescent cells, is linked to various age-related diseases and even some cancers. Now, I say related in the sense that it may just be coincidental as a byproduct of cellular growth that is found throughout the body, and it doesn't necessarily implicate it in cancers. As in, if you have osteopontin, it will cause cancer. It probably can contribute to cancerous growth indirectly, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the, the cause, the point cause, right, of cancer. Now, this is something to consider, right, this safety of osteopontin, because the osteopontin glycoprotein is of key interest when it comes to stimulating hair growth. You see, the pharmaceutical company Amplifica Holdings Group, Incorporated released their phase one clinical trial data on AMP303, and this is an osteopontin derivative that was noted to grow hair and have some signs of potential efficacy after just one injection. So that goes to show that this sort of pathway, the osteopontin CD44 receptor pathway could be pretty potent if after just one, you know, intradermal injection, you're getting such a significant amount of hair regrowth or notable, you know, increases of hair growth. Now, at the same time, if it's that potent where you can just do one injection and it leads to all this positive growth, right? There's a question. If osteopontin is related to senescent cells and it's a very potent stimulator of hair follicle stem cells such that they begin to proliferate and differentiate into cell types of key interest like keratinocytes, melanocytes, and dermal papilla cells. That means what we're playing around with could very well be a sort of kicker, not only in the sense of hair growth, but maybe it could influence senescent cells into becoming diseased and maybe, God forbid, carcinogenic cells. In an article from Wired titled, quote, A hair loss study raises new questions about aging cells, unquote, Amplifica co-founder and lead scientist Dr. Maxim Plikas essentially makes the argument that people live with hairy molds that are full of senescent cells for decades and they're fine. So it may very well be the case that the use of a potential secretosome of a senescent cell could come without significant risks of cancer. But if we're going to be honest, this thing still needs to be elucidated, right? We need to understand if osteopontin and this sort of derivative AMP-03 created by Amplifica will not influence those senescent cells, will not give it a proper environment to say, oh, hey, we're not dormant anymore. Let's start growing and proliferating again because those senescent cells could possibly, again, turn into those tumors and it could potentially become cancer. But I don't want to harp on that too much. I digress. In the context of PI-1 inhibitors, when senescent cells accumulate, 
This contributes to age-related conditions, including hair follicle dysfunction. So it could be the case that the PI1 pathway plays a central role in driving this process, making it a key target for interventions aimed at mitigating aging and promoting cellular health.